Welcome to the Functional Safety First YouTube channel. In this video, we will understand what ISO 26262 refers to as calibration data. There are two types of data that are described in Part 6 Annex C, configuration data and calibration data. In our last video, we had discussed about configuration data. And in this video, we will discuss about calibration data. In this video, we will help you understand the following aspects. What is calibration data? Why are they important in the functional safety world? Where should we describe calibration data? How to detect unintended changes of calibration data during runtime? And how should we verify calibration data? Calibration data refers to parameters that are input to the configured software after the software build. These parameters are typically stored in non-volatile memory such as an EEPROM or data flash and are programmed to a specific value at end of line during manufacturing or by the OEM themselves. Again, this is not something new and has existed in automotive software for decades now. The final binary contains the behaviors for different calibration data and depending upon the values programmed for a data, the corresponding behavior is executed. Calibration data itself does not contain executable or interpretable code. Calibration data may be hardware or software relevant. Let's take an example of a hardware calibration. For displays, a white balance is done to adjust the relative intensities of the red, green and blue pixels. These color corrections of RGP are stored as calibration data since these intensities vary from one display to another. An example of a software calibration is the operational speed limits of an ADAS feature such as the adaptive cruise control or automatic emergency braking. A calibration such as a country coding of the product may affect both software and hardware. This picture is an extension of what we showed you in our previous video on configuration data. Here, you see how the calibration data causes the configured software to behave differently. The final application software behaves according to the calibrated values. From a functional safety point of view, only calibration parameters that can influence safety functionality need to have a clearly articulated strategy as stated in ISO 26262. All other calibrations that do not interact or influence safety requirements do not matter. How to detect unintended changes of calibration data during runtime? The calibration data stored in NVM can be susceptible to two kinds of problems. Number one, a memory hardware error such as a bit flip or a stuck at fault leads to a wrong calibration data, which in turn leads to a violation of the safety goal. Number two, a non-SL or a lower SL software makes an unintended write to a calibration data, thus changing its value. To prevent or detect unintended changes to calibration data during runtime, different mechanisms can be implemented. Number one, a plausibility check or a range check could be made on the calibration data and if the data is implausible or out of range, a default value can be used instead. Number two, the safety related calibration data can be redundantly stored in different blocks or regions and before every access of the data, a comparison of the data can be made with its redundant copy and if there is a mismatch, a default data can be used or a safe state can be triggered. Redundant storage can be implemented using double buffering, triple buffering or even quadruple buffering wherein having more redundant copies helps to not only detect but also to correct the corrupted calibration data. And number three, the data can be protected using ECC, software or hardware. One bit correction, two bit error detection is available in most memory hardwares. However, note that hardware ECC can only detect or correct hardware faults and a different mechanism must be additionally implemented to prevent software interferences that lead to a corruption of the calibration data. Where should we describe calibration data? As per ISO 26262, a calibration data spec must be developed that clearly defines the valid values of the calibration data, the purpose of the data and the interdependencies and compatibility between different data. However, it is the choice of the program or the organization to develop it as a separate work product or integrate it with the existing work products. The technical safety requirements spec should describe calibration data. It must list all the safety related calibrations and their valid values as requirements. It must also specify the safety mechanism that must be implemented to detect runtime changes of data. The software architecture must describe the design of the safety mechanism. Software calibration of different software components may also be described in their respective detailed design specifications. How should we verify calibration data? 
There are different methods of verification that include both static verification via reviews and dynamic testing. First, let's cover the static verification methods. Number one, it must be ensured that during programming at end of line, the valid calibration data values are known and the value to be programmed is decided correctly. Secondly, we must ensure that the software that handles the different values of calibration parameters has been implemented correctly and invalid values are rejected and incorrectly should not influence the behavior of the configured software. The safety mechanism that has been implemented to protect the calibration data must be reviewed as well as tested at different levels such as unit testing, integration testing and functional testing. All calibration data must be tested. Choosing the right sample set for testing is crucial. However, should you test all the valid values of each calibration data? This depends on the type of data. If there are discrete individual values, all values must be tested or if it is a complete range of values, a range boundary check approach may be taken. Another important aspect is to test the combinations of calibration data that are interdependent on each other and also to test combinations of calibration and configuration data. When these number of combinations are low, it's feasible to test all the possible combinations and remove the risk that the software will fail when set with an untested combination. But when there are many possible combinations, we need a justifiable test strategy that will keep the amount of testing that the supplier must do to a reasonable level and also provide confidence that the shipped software will work as calibrated. That's it for this video. Please feel free to reach out to us at autofunctionalsafety at gmail.com for any questions on this topic. Thank you.